Welcome into another episode of Suds with Luds. Today, I know it's appropriate name, isn't it? I love the name. I love the name. <laughs> Today, we're not in the studio. We are actually at the Sandman Hotel out here in Plano. I think technically we're in Plano. Uh, owned by Dallas Stars owner Tom Gillardi. Um, and what we have here is we're sitting in Moxie's. And so there's the Moxie's bar here in the Sandman. There's also the Shark Club on the other side. So it's pretty appropriate where we are. And before I get to the guest over here, Darren Hatcher, uh, I want to welcome in a new sponsor that's come in. It's right here, Herman Marshall Whiskey. Imagine that, Hatch. Came in today. They heard Darian Hatcher was coming. Um, so anyways, <laughs> Darian Hatcher. Hatch, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Lux. You don't get back often enough, do you? I, you know, I really don't. I, you know, I, it's hard. You know, and why? I, I don't know why. You know, you just need more excuses to get here. Yeah, yeah. That's we I, got an I, alumni skate every Friday, <laughs> so we can do that. Practice, right? We got practices. <laughs> so, how often do you make it back? Uh, I was back uh, twice last year. Yeah, I'll be back twice this year. And but prior to that, it had been a while. I yeah. think it had been like three years or something like that. And well, you came in for the game last year. I remember we were yeah, playing the Detroit Red Wings, the, yeah, right? Yeah, we were playing the Red Wings. And it's funny because we were, we were about. I don't know. We, we were playing together. Hatchie and I were playing together. And it was sometime in the second period. I just kind of looked over and I said, how you doing? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> so do you get to skate much anymore? Or do you? Are you uh, skating with the wings? I, so I, I go out a few times with them, yes. Yeah. But I haven't stated for, I, honestly, I think the last time was that, was that there? Yeah, so Well, I should be flying tomorrow. I was going to say, we should probably <laughs> mention why, why we're here and why Hatch is here, I should say is Marty Turkle and the Dallas Stars Foundation. They're going to have the Big Hearts Charity Challenge, I believe is what it's called. Um, I believe that, what, 16, 18 teams come? 16, I think. 16? Yeah. 16, come, 16 teams come to this event. Um, and then what will happen tonight is we will all head over to the uh, rink in Frisco, and there will be a, an auction, and we will all get drafted by one of those 16 teams. And then tomorrow... We end up playing, I think it's three games. Three games. Yeah, we play three games with our teams. We hang with them all day long, uh, all for charity. Uh, Marty obviously does a great job with the Stars Foundation and stuff like that. So have you been training or anything like that before does this thing? Look like Not it? any run. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, when I get back, I'm going to start, though. <laughs> yeah, I know, when you get done. It's funny because just before Hatch came down here to sit down at the bar with me, you were in, uh, in a room doing a Belfort documentary. Yes. Yeah, that went well, obviously. Any uh, stories? I think a few stories, you know, you, like, you, you know how it is, careful, right? you have to be careful, you know, and that's how we are. Yeah. And, uh, but I think there was a few stories and, you know, uh, we both know Eddie's quirky. Eddie's we'll Eddie. We'll call it. Eddie's, yeah. Eddie's, Eddie's yeah. Eddie. There it is. I was looking for the right words, but Eddie's yeah. Eddie. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, had a good talk about it. Yeah, well, that's good. Eddie's, Eddie's put a ton of work into his project with Belfort Spirits and everything like that. Family business for them. Oh. Um, actually, I think uh, Ed and the family are going to be on a podcast coming up here in a couple of weeks. We'll have everybody in. So let's start Hatch from the beginning. Um, you come obviously from a, I would say, a hockey family, but you played with your brother, Kevin. Um, what, four years younger or older than you are? Kevin, six. Five and a half, six. Five and a half, years, okay. So whatever you want to call it. The one dude that probably gets thrown under, or not under you the bus, he, he wouldn't fit under the bus. <laughs> it's actually, his nickname is Mountain, right? Yeah, Mark. Moving Mountain, we were telling him. Yeah, yeah and t tell the story we were just talking about. And I've only met Mark, I believe, one or two times. And he was at Washington Capitals camp? Yeah, he played uh, two years in Milwaukee and a year in Baltimore okay. for the Caps. And he, uh, the story we're talking <laughs> yeah. I, the story is that he went to weigh in and his weigh in said like, I think he wrote down 252. He told you too, right? Was yeah, it 252 he did. or 255? It was an odd number. He was and, trying to. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he was trying to bring the weight down. And uh, Terry Murray was the coach then at the time. And Terry <laughs> didn't believe it or Terry, whatever, made him step on the scale. Uh -huh. Stepped on the scale. And I, I think he was like 267 or he was like at least 12 pounds heavier than what he had written yeah. down. But whatever that. And uh, so Terry's like, what? You know what happened? And uh, and Mark said, "Well, I must have had a big breakfast." <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what response. he said to Terry Murray. <laughs> I must have had a big breakfast. Okay, so from Sterling Heights, yep. Michigan, yep. and um, 
you're not far from where Mike Madano, Livonia, like Livonia 40, 50 most, miles away yeah, or something? Yeah, 40, yeah. Did you guys ever cross paths playing youth you hockey coming up? You know, we didn't. You know, he no. was at two years older, so it was probably right on that edge of yeah. crossing paths. And in Michigan, you know, in Detroit, there's a lot of, a ho lot. A lot of hockey. Yeah. So you really, you know, you might move a year up. That'd be about it. Yeah. Uh, but no, I never crossed paths with him. So high school did you play high school or how uh, did you no high get school. to where you are no high school hockey in uh detroit all but travel then all travel you know uh, they, they there's areas that have high school hockey and it's actually like this today it's getting bigger today but when i grew up there was hardly none it was pretty much non-existent yeah so yeah i'd have to play you know travel hockey at one at one point my parents had three of us playing travel hockey with three different home ices and the home ice is the closest one is probably 35 minutes to be honest lads like uh you know, I don't know how they did it. My dad's a carpenter. Uh, Big E. Yeah, Big E. And I don't know how they did it, but three of us playing travel hockey. They got rewarded, though. Yes, right? yes, Two yes. of the three played big-time yes, hockey, yes, so they got rewarded. Yes. So you play travel hockey, which, did you did you find anywhere, or was it all kind of local? I know Detroit now, what they do now, because well, I'm involved in the, yeah, you know, the, the U18. Coach U18s. Yeah, so now what Detroit has done, is they've kind of stayed within their territory. Was it like that then, or did you guys fly anywhere? Or? Uh, we... You know, we would go to Toronto a bit. Toronto's yeah. only three and a half hours yeah. from there. And outside of Toronto, we, we, we wouldn't travel a lot. You know, we, we had the four or five teams in, in uh, the Detroit area, very competitive teams. You know, the odd time maybe Chicago, or Chicago would come yeah. to Detroit. Cleveland really didn't have teams then. You know, they have them now. Uh, Pittsburgh never. I'm just naming these teams because now they have teams. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so really it was Toronto, Chicago would be the, the two So as a kid, were you a Wings fan? I'm, I'm you know, guessing. You know, or no? Kevin started playing when I was like 12 years old, 12 and a half or okay. 13. I was 13. Yeah. So I, I, I watched the wings, but the second Kevin started playing, I got rid of the wings. I was no, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I watched Kevin, and I was a Washington Capital fan. Ah, okay. Well, so and, you go. And interesting fact, lads. I think you know this, but we Sean like facts. Chambers, Bundy, grew up. My partner, five houses down. From I us. know that. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about Sterling Heights. That should be. So I'm going to get Bundy on this uh, podcast. Did Bundy have when he, I don't know if it was Detroit, uh, New Jersey or Dallas, did Bundy do something in his yard when he, when he won the Stanley Cup? Did they put the logo in the yard yeah, for his, his parents yeah, or something his, no, like that? No, his parents said they spray painted the, the big devil in their yard in Detroit, mind you, and they yeah. beat Detroit in the finals. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yeah, they, That's yeah. having some big balls, Bundy. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, so you go from travel hockey. What was your step like when you went to juniors? Well, OHL, so, correct? OHL. I left at 17. I, I really contemplated college. Yeah. Uh, I had watched my two brothers play in the OHL. They both played in the OHL. And back then, the, the Canadian Hockey League was there, but it wasn't as well known. Mm -hmm. And uh, I contemplated going to school or, or going the uh, Where would you have gone to school? I'd say in Michigan State, or out of all schools, Dartmouth. Okay. Believe Dartmouth. Or not, yes. Believe it or not, yes. Uh, not. <laughs> but never had to get there. So at 17, I left, and I went to North Bay. How was that? How was that transition from travel hockey to playing junior hockey? Was it a, Now, you, were you as, how would I put this? Were, not that you were as big then, but were you a bigger player so then I, relative I, to everybody else? I grew a ton when I was probably 15, okay. 16. Yeah. So, you know, so going to junior, so you were going already, to juniors, I was probably like six, three, six, three and a half, yeah. maybe six, four, I, I, you know, but I'd say a hundred, you know, 190 pounds, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know what I remember most about it, honestly, this is my dad driving me up and me almost crying the first three hours, you know, like first time from leaving home. Yeah. Yeah. Bill it when you got there. Yeah. Bill it when you get there. Basically, How far was it from My home? dad drops you off. It's like seven hours. It's oh, about okay. three hours north of Toronto, straight north of Toronto. Uh, Parents make a lot of trips there? You know what? To North Bay, not a ton, but a lot of the games, Windsor, yeah. London, Sarnia, well, Sarnia wasn't there, but a lot of the teams were in the area and they would go to a lot of the, a lot of the away games. So you were, what, 17, 17 your first year? Yeah, 17. So did you get drafted at the end of your first year or second year? End of my first year. End of first year. And then you were a big dog on the team, yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I came in, like I said, I, it's not that I was a late bloomer, but... I was the second round round OHL pick. Yeah. And then a year later, eighth overall. Eighth overall. Yes. 
So that's pretty, you, you obviously made stops. You know what I'm saying, yes. Yeah. I made a lot of stops in yeah. that time, yeah. Well, and, and I would think back then, back then, I mean, not when, when I played. I mean, you were, what, 10 years after me. But then, if, if you're going to be wrong, be big, right? And well, yeah, today's yeah. game yeah, has exactly. changed yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so they see the size and things like that. Yeah. So now you get drafted, and then you end up in mini. And I didn't even realize this until last night. I was kind of looking at when, when I went there and when you went there. We went there the same year. Same year. We actually went to mini the very same year, and I, did, I didn't realize that. And what I wanted to ask you about is because I know you played U.S. programs and things like that, being a U.S.-born player yep. and kind of making yep. that way. We get to Mini, and there's a guy that's the captain on the team, I believe, at that time, Neil Broughton, who had just, you know, a few years earlier won, won the, the gold medal. Yes. What, what was that like, or did it not even resonate to you that much? No, that it did. Was it, it, no, it resonated. No, I, I, knew, I remember, well, I don't remember. <laughs> I remember watching the game. <laughs> yeah. You know, in 1980, winning the gold medal. I, I, I remember. I remember when they well beat Russia, then winning the gold medal. Yeah. I think it seemed like beating Russia was a bigger deal than actually winning. Nobody the gold even medal. remembered who they everyone played for the gold medal, right? Play, yes, yeah. everyone thinks they played Russia. But uh, no, and I do remember it. And yeah, you know what? I'm not. I think you know me a bit. I'm not a starstruck guy. Yeah. But I definitely. First of all, I knew where I was at. Right. I, I was where I always wanted to be. And I definitely knew Neil Broughton, and yeah. you know, it, it, it did resonate with me, though. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Did you ever talk to him about that? No, or really. Was it kind of yeah, shy? Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, shy, kind of quiet. And Broughton's you know. that kind of guy, right? He's yeah. just a quiet dude and, at the time. But, so, how was your first year pro? Coming from where you went, tra travel hockey, a couple years in junior, and now you're an eighth all over pick, and you get the mini. Well, first year pro, I, it was well, it was great. First of yeah. all, I remember when Bob. Uh, Grabbed me in the office and said, "Bob Ganey." Yeah, Bob yep. Ganey. Yeah, we mentioned Clark. that a lot on this podcast. Carbo and I last week had a long talk about Bo, and I'm yeah. sure you would have a lot of things to say about him too. But he, he said, "You know what? You you played well. You did what you had to do. You're going to stick for the time being." And yep. I remember walking back from the Met Center over to the hotel. hotel. I think the Radisson or whatever it was. Yep. There. <laughs> yep. And just like honestly, I like was like fucking yeah. 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 I was like so excited, you yep. know, and. Uh, but no, you know what? My rookie year, I, I had a bunch of great teammates. I still remember all those guys. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, I, I didn't know any better, but it seemed like we had a just a great bunch. We had a good guys. group. We, we did, didn't win right? a lot, but We're, we had a great group. We right? had a great group. Now, yeah. I want to ask you. Yeah. Kevin has played. Your brother's played now. What three, four years pro at the time? Uh, five or six. Five years. Okay. Did, did he give you advice along the way, or did he kind of leave you alone? Did he say he do this, look for that, things like that? Going into camp, he said just don't, just do it. He said don't try to do too much, which is the biggest thing. Yeah. He said go in there and play how you play. But that's all he did is try to do too much. Well, I Kevin know, was that offensive guy, yeah, right? I know. Yeah. But he just said go in there, do what you do, and yeah. that's it. He said don't try to do too much. I know you're going to be nervous. Try not to be. Mm -hmm. But you know, words can't help that part. He sure. understood that. He said just go in there and play. Good advice, and, uh, right? Great advice. It really was. You so, know, I, I don't, I don't want to put you in that category of this big fighter, right? Yeah. I mean, and I don't think you put yourself in that category, but there weren't many guys that wanted to fuck around with you anyways. Was junior, did you fight a lot in junior? Or did you Not have really. to? Did you have to prove yourself in Not junior? Not really. By the time I got to junior, yeah. the fighting was pretty, it wasn't like it was, starting it to fade was away. Yep. going to watch my brother Mark play when I saw the team go in the yeah. stands, yeah. and I'm not lying, go yeah. into the stands. Yeah. It wasn't like that in that eight, nine years when Mark, my oldest brother, was there, it had changed. Okay. Uh, yeah, I fought, but I fought late. I fought Eric Lindros. You know, I, I fought guys like that. I, yeah. mean, I mean, I probably fought about as much as I did here. You know, yeah. like four, well, five, think, six, but, seven fights. You know, But I, they're... You're so big, and you have. And my thing is, I would talk to people all the time. Like it was your reach. Like you could just, you're big right, enough, yeah. and your reach, and you yeah. just hold guys out there, exactly. and just kind of slap them once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so now you're in, you're in there, and I, you know, I was looking. I think our first year there, I wouldn't call it a defensive coach, but we had Andy Murray was an assistant yeah, coach to Bob Ganey, right, right? Yeah. and yeah. Jarvie. Well, I want to get to Rick Wilson, and and Wilkes was there our second year because we didn't spend a lot of time there. I got there and then you got there and then before you knew it, we were moving here to Texas. So Wills was our assistant coach. I had Rick Wilson as a coach when I was at North Dakota. And then I, oh, it I seems know. like I've been with Wills for a long time. The impact, if any, 
and, and how Wills helped you along the way as a young defenseman, especially. I, I had well, Wills in college at 17, 18 years old. 18 year, I guess that had been 18 years old. So I knew the effect that, that he had on me. Was it the same with you? Because Wills always knew how to talk to the specific player. That was, I, I always looked at assistant coaches always being the buffer between the head coach and the players. You know, when the head coach, yep. we had Hitch, we'll get into that. We had Hitchcock, and somebody had to come in and kind of calm the waters a little yep. bit. Your thoughts on, on Rick Wilson when you first got into the league? So I've been asked this, and so I, and, uh, I, and I say, Rick, first of all, Bob Daney, once we're done talking about Bob, had a mm-hmm. huge influence. Being the first coach, he's so calm, he's so almost soothing, Can, right? I've tried to explain it. Can you explain having conversations with Bob Daney? No. <laughs> Hard, right? There's a story. I know it's off subject. I'll talk. But no. Todd Harvey, you ever hear this story? Oh. When Todd Harvey was down in Dallas, he was uh, down in the summer training, and uh, he was staying with Bob Danny. And Bob Danny that was Bob's said, idea. let's go for dinner. Yeah, let's go have a beer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Harvey was, I think, 19 or 20 then. And uh, Todd told me the story that Bob literally sat there and read a newspaper the whole time <laughs> and didn't say a word. So there's a book took the Bob. That tells you. But Bob taught me a ton about the game yeah. and other things. But, and then my, and it would be Rick Wilson. Yeah. Rick, uh, you know, I didn't agree with everything he did. Okay, why? Well, I think. Well, I, different I remember philosophies? A few, a few, no, Were I, you a different I just player? remember a few things he said to me at the time okay. that I, I really didn't agree with. Like? Like I remember once in a, we were in St. Louis and something happened. And he was more pissed than anyone, I think. And in the hallway, he grabbed me. Or he said something in the locker room. If you said something in the room, you might remember, Lugs. And it was something about, you're standing next to the fucking guy, like, like knock him out and oh, hold wait, him up. Oh, wait, is this so when he punched Rick Zombo in the nose? I, there, <laughs> I don't know. And okay, so, he did but that I, I didn't like okay. that, but no. Yeah. But overall, Rick yeah. Wilson had a huge influence on yeah. me. You know what? The, the way he worded stuff, he would pull me in meetings, compare me to a bear, you know, okay. polar bears are the yeah, yeah. the biggest, toughest, but they're very gentle. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the way he did stuff. Yes, yeah. Rick Wilson absolutely. Which had you a are kind stuff. of that gentle giant until. Well, and that's how he described it. And he's like, "Don't." He's like, "Be a little more." Yeah, he wanted the, you out there to push. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's and, and we'll, we're going to get into when you became the captain and things like that. And that, you know, I have my philosophies on different kind of captains and things and. You know, Wills was always that guy, and he always seemed to have the right thing to say at the right time. Yes. He went to lose his marbles, yeah. you know, every, yeah. but he usually kept himself in check. So then we're there for, what, two years, was it? We were in Mini? Two years in Mini. And I love Minnesota. Did, I, did we? I think I grabbed a bunch of snowmobiles, didn't I, when we were yeah, in Minnesota? Yeah, we went we to the river, yeah. No, all about the tour in, in Minnesota. Oh, we did the tour, break. that's right. The, yeah. Yes, we, we the whole a, team or a lot of the team exactly. went out. We took a lot of a lot of the guys and that in Minnesota. Was a ton of fun. And yeah, then I had in a, Dallas. We went up. I had a buddy that was involved with Skidoo, and so he got us all some snowmobiles. And we went for I think we went to Sugar Shacks, or maybe that could have been Montreal too. But anyway, we went to a bunch of rides, and then I know the whole yeah, I know that was the fun. whole train wreck when we get up to Wisconsin on the snowmobiles <laughs> <laughs> All Star break. But so okay, so we moved to Dallas. We <laughs> truck on down the road. I was happy as hell. I was in Montreal for a long time. Now I'm four or five hours from my hometown. And now we're up and we're headed to Dallas. Thoughts on when we first got there? When we first got there. You know what? I think I was just... I should say here, when we first got here. Here. I think I was still just in that that phase where I was happy to be playing okay. and just load the shit in my car and away you go. Yeah. You know, you, you, you had a family at the time and I didn't have that. You know, and so for me it was just like, let's just... I was talking to Mo and Mo was all pumped up. Yep. You know? And uh, I would just got in my car and came down. So I never even really thought about it. You know, got down here and everyone loved it, right? Yeah. Like, and, uh, and, it, and then it all began. And it all began, yes. So you it talk about began. family. We, we, we talked about that earlier. Actually. When did you meet your wife, Heather? I actually met her in Minnesota. You did? Yeah, I met her in Minnesota. Is she a Minnesota girl? Yep, from there. Okay. You have, what, two kids? Four kids? Six kids? Five. How many kids you got now? Five? Five. What's the, what's the youngest? None is 14, oldest 28. Oh, 14. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, how many played hockey? The two boys. Two boys. They both did. Did, did uh, Chase, was, is Chase the oldest son? Chase is the oldest. Where did he ultimately, or what did he, he play? He played in Europe. He did. Uh, I think three years in Europe. Yeah. And then, uh, he played junior? Yes. Okay. He played junior, and then he actually went and got his diploma. 
he went and graduated in uh, Rhode Island, and then uh, he went and played in Europe for uh, three years. So Heather was the hockey mom. Dad's gone oh, all the time. We're the gone all the time. Mom. She's traveling probably all the time. She was driving the hockey around. mom. Yeah, yeah. It, it's hard on them. We didn't we didn't realize it till yeah. after. Oh, we always had good excuses not to be yeah. able to do certain things. Um, so now the kids are on their way. You're in Dallas. How do we get to year two or year three? You get three years down the road. Was it your third year as a Dallas star that you got the letter? Do you remember what year it would have been? As a Dallas star or as a... As a Dallas star. Once you got the C on your chest. Yeah, that's about right. Like 94? Yeah. I think it was 94. I, what I want to know is, because I, I sat next to you in the locker room, and, and I, I just recall the meeting, okay? And, and Carbo and I had a, a good talk about this last week, and talking about just captaincies, um, young players, older players, blah, 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 all this other kind of stuff. Did you know that you were getting the C prior to Bob? I was hoping that's what you were going to say, nope. because I remember the reaction and on I your face. I think it was in Toronto. We were sitting... Or I, Tampa or up there. But anyway. we were in the locker room, right? Yeah. <clears throat> And we were sitting there, and I remember Bo saying, and our captain's going to be, whatever. And I kind of looked at you, and you had this look on your face like, what? He never said a word to me. And I was, <laughs> which, which is a gamey kind of thing, right? I think. But I would also say that knowing Bob in a different way, that he would have said, uh, Darian, here's what I'm going to do today. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that never happened. Never. No. How, and I, because I, I for some reason, I can kind of remember you looking around at all the other guys, and I mean, we're talking Guy Carbono. Well, I remember my game. jersey was backwards too. Oh, and you never even put that together. Yeah, did no. You, did you didn't look, even look at it? No, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so take me through that. Well, you just did. <laughs> no, I, it was it was literally like that. I had no idea, and. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, and I turned the jersey, and the C is on it, and I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and that's... Did you have any inkling? He never told me. He never said a word. So, no. And with you know, the guys, I, I think about it, with some of the guys that were in the See, locker room... I don't think Carbo was there yet. Either. No, Carbo wasn't there yet. Yeah, he wasn't there yet. But, but I, I think of some of those guys in the locker room, and I'm just wondering, like, how you handle... Because, again, I want to go back to that... I remember, because none of us obviously knew. I mean, if you didn't know, we didn't know. Right. <clears throat> and I remember looking at you, and you had this blank look on which normally you do have a blank look on your face, well, even you. when it's a good day. Thank so, you. But there was this blank look on your face, and I'm like, I don't think he even knew this was coming. No, nope. I, I had no idea. So? So when it happened? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I just... Well, I mean, right away you just go out and play. You know, I was probably yeah. a little nervous, probably yeah. a little whatever. And then, uh, you know, over time I just just grow into it. You know, I mean, but I was shocked. I was honored. I was a little bit of everything, to be honest. And uh, did you feel you had to change your game at all? I don't feel I had to change my game. Right. I, I, I think, you know, you had mentioned I was still young, so I think my game was kind of maybe still evolving a little bit. And. Uh, it, it's hard for me to talk about because I remember I, I was kind of what you said like I had a blank look and I was yeah. kind of like okay well now what you know? did you guys have a talk after like it no. would seem like a Bob he Ganey. never he never really we, we did have conversations but not for a while it wasn't for a while like well because I remember that the year is that did we make playoffs that year or we didn't because it was when Bratzi got traded see see Bob Bob came was the head coach in Dallas when he when we came it to was Minnesota. When, and, then, and then it was oh, I think it was through the next season that we that he stepped well Bob was the general manager head coach. Right. Yep. And everybody I, I get this question all the time. Like, man, did it surprise you when Bob Ganey, you know, got rid of the head coaching thing and went on to be general I'm like, no, why would he want to get rid of a title? Because if he was just said I don't want the GM them where somebody else can fire them. Right. Why wouldn't you want to be yeah, gems? You, you don't have to GM, fire right. yourself. No. So, but and so, anyways, it was the second. I, I think it was that second year in yeah. Dallas. I want to say, and <clears throat> I don't even remember who, who the captain was. Was it Bratzi? It was Bratzi, and then Tinner, right? Oh no, Tinner was the captain when we got there. I thought, or was it Bratzi then Tinner? It probably was that. 
Rossi came with us from Minnesota. He was a the captain there, the prime captain here. And then they moved Tenardi ended up. Tenor and then Tenor got traded. So you, it was like on the job training. Yes. And you just kind of ride, ride the thing. But the reason I'm going to the captaincy thing, uh, and I'll tell you what Carbo and I talked about uh, last week when we were doing this. Um, I'm always curious about, because in Montreal, they just named. Do you follow the NHL much? Yeah. I mean, do you well, keep not, tabs? Yeah, I keep tabs. Okay. So in Montreal, and you know what Montreal is like, they yeah. just named Nick Suzuki uh, a couple yeah, weeks I ago. Saw, yeah. And he's 23 years yeah, old, right? 23, yeah. 24. And then we go over to Winnipeg, and Blake Wheeler, who is now 36 years old, been captain of the Winnipeg Jets for the last 12 years. They take the C time. away. Yeah. So he's not the captain anymore. Your thoughts on being a young captain, or do you want to get somebody that's been in there a little bit longer, learn from certain other older players along the way? Just your thoughts on how do you how do you go yeah. into where the C coming back into a room that's got some veteran guys in there? Yeah. Are you cautious about what you say, or you just take it and run? I think you have to take it and run. I mean, I think you you don't try to change anything you know Bob, Bob and I did talk about it later you know and he did mention that he knew I was going to be there he had no idea what was going to go on with the team right you know I mean yep. that was a, a big time for the organization were changes were coming yep and uh and you know he had mentioned that I, I had said stuff prior in the locker room that he really liked he yep. could hear wherever they are and yep. uh, they're always listening yeah which I learned they're I, like the know. government they're always fucking <laughs> listening somehow but uh and uh but yeah I think you just kind of take it and go with it and, and the reason that I that I believe it was 110 percent the right choice and and it's kind of followed a trend Darian Hatcher Brendan Morrow Jamie Benn None of you guys are really the rah rah kind of guys, right? And and I, I the way that's the way I look at it is you go you go do your thing on the ice and when there's a when there's a problem, when there's a big hit to be made, it's more about the acting, not the, the talking. Right. And I and I always felt Brendan for sure always played that way. And and I think Jamie Benn has, has to play that yeah. way and he always did. Yeah. And I think you kind of sit there as a, as a teammate and you sit there and go, yeah, Big Daddy's here tonight, you know, and the other team recognized as that. We recognize that. So <clears throat> so that, that's the way I've always looked at the captains. I, I've always been curious about guys, their thoughts on being a younger guy, an older guy. So then you go down the road a couple years, your brother who's five years older than you, all of a sudden joins the Dallas Stars. I would love to hear... <laughs> what that was like for you because were you guys tight growing up uh you know we were tight but him and my older brother mark were, were okay. tighter because just the age yeah uh you know we, we were a close family but no i, I wasn't as tight as i am now with them because you seemed like you were in doubt by then i was tight yes okay. but as a kid that you know when i'm 12 and he's 18 there's not a lot sure. in common and uh but yes we drew really tight yeah in dallas we were really tight yes how was it playing with having him as a teammate now? And you know, I, I did ask this, and you know, it didn't work out. Yeah. But I, I, I loved it. You know, yeah. I loved having him here. Uh, you know, like I said, I know things didn't work out, and I think you think I think you've said something that is probably the best that he got moved. Well, the, the, what but, I what I had thought is because it seemed like you guys were together. Were you guys together as much off the ice as you were on the ice? Hang probably out at night. Thinking and, about it, probably yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought yeah. and. I, and we all love having a good, good time. Yeah. And then you're playing with your brother, and then and I think it I think it's hard. I don't yeah. know. Well, I, I understand. Never, what, we've talked about it. And that's why. Yeah. I, yeah. And, and, and I thought it was. And well, and let's just say when when Kevin actually left Dallas, we got Sergey Zubov back. Right. <laughs> so yeah. It was yeah. a good move. Yeah. Another Bob Ganey yeah. thing. But but I was just curious how that was on the ice. I don't I don't think it really affected anything as you're playing together. But I just wondered the off ice yeah, side of it. I mean, your family's together all the time, and you know, I mean, did you spend a lot of time? No, the family didn't spend that much no, time together. No. You know, it was, it was lunches and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah. <laughs> well, but our lunches—they're they're not normal lunches. Our lunches—they start at eleven and they end up just past no, dinner not time. Eleven, about one. Usually. Yeah, and the wife usually throws the shit in the garbage pan because you weren't home on time yeah. and it gets burnt. But no, you know, I I, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, I. I I think that we were fortunate 
And then, you know, we got to play in the World Cup and Olympics as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but in Dallas, I, I did enjoy it. And, yeah. you know, and, and I know I told the story about when he got traded that I told him. Like, <laughs> I don't know the story. Tell us the story. <laughs> I think I told you. Yeah. Anyways. Well, I'm not going to talk well, for you. This is a so, podcast. Fucking talk for yourself. <laughs> so we were, uh, it was in the summer, obviously. We were going on the boat. I had a bunch of, like, two or three buddies out. Had a you big guys old, had some good boats, though. They had you? a big old cooler of beer packed. Yeah. And uh, we're getting ready to go. And I, I run in the house and the phone rings. That's when you still have normal phones, right? Yeah. House phones. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I answer the phone. And I, I really think it was Doug Armstrong. Okay. I forget who I. I think it was Doug. And he's like, hey, Darren, how you doing? You know, you're around your brother. And I'm like, hey, yeah, what's up? You know, and he's like, well, we're trying to get a hold of him. We can't get a hold of him. I'm like, well, he's outside right now. He's... You know, I didn't so want to Army. say, on the boat packed in the cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say, you know, he's outside right now, but you know why? What's up? And he's like, well, you know, we, we traded him. That would be, Bob Ganey would never do that, right? But yeah, Army was the assistant at the time, But they could Yeah, they couldn't get a hold of him. Okay. So, and I was like, okay. I would think it'd be better to say, well, can you have him call us instead of, you would have put two yeah, and so two together. I don't know who, I forget who it was. I don't want to put all. It could have been Stuco. And, and uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah. I, I, yeah. And then I say, well, you know, do you just want me to tell them? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. Okay, so you tell them. Does he think you're fucking with him? No, no, I think Seriously? he should tell. Because like he... I said, we were literally just getting ready to go. There's, my dad was there, a couple buddies. We were getting ready to go out on the water, you know, and just have a nice day. And. And uh, I was like, hey. How did Kevin take it? He didn't take it well. You know, right. he definitely wasn't mad at me. Right. And, you know, he was going to Pittsburgh at the time. And, and then we, you know, I, I kind of, if I remember, I kind of I said, hey, you're going to go win the yeah. Stanley Cup. You yeah. know, like, you're going to play with the Mew and Yager and those guys. Right. And, and, you know, hopefully go win the Stanley Cup. And we talked about it a little bit, and that was it. But, yeah, having to tell him. How like, about your dad? Your dad was probably happy that he's got two boys playing on the same yeah, team. Yeah, you know, I, honestly, I have my dad didn't really say much. I don't, I don't think. I, yeah. I don't even remember. I only remember Kevin, honestly. That was, but anyway, so yeah, I had, I would, I would I had think, to tell him. I would <laughs> think as, as a dad, and, 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 you know, you have a couple of kids that are playing on the same team. You got two kids in the NHL, and they're, they're playing on the same team. I mean, the travel's a little yeah, bit more, uh, yeah. you know, I got it. doable. Yeah. So, all right. Um, Let's talk about your partner. And I, when I say your partner, I, I consider you and Maddie. Yeah, you Maddie. and Richard Matuchuk is like the two that were meant yeah, to be. Maddie, yeah. Like I, I you, you guys had such a good chemistry as yeah. a pair. And, and you were the guys that you knew who you were going against every night, right? Yeah. It, did you guys, I know off the ice shit. I mean, we all know that, yeah. right? Did you guys talk hockey at all as partners? Or did it? Was it just organic? It just happened. I think it was more because organic. You, you guys had this. You knew. Yeah, I think it was more organic. Yeah. You know, on the bench in locker room we had talked, but outside, yeah, we, we didn't talk much hockey. Well, always. we couldn't speak in sentences when we left the rink <laughs> an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I just, I was curious because I couldn't see really you guys talking a lot of hockey, but, but I just think no, that we never you, did. It was that relationship you could read off each other. Yes. Yeah. The one no. thing I know for a fact is like Maddie playing with you. He could, he could have bigger balls, you know what I'm saying? Because Big Daddy was back there, and there were a couple. I remember the first time Maddie fought Robbie DeMaio, his first his first NHL fight. Yeah, I, and I, I was actually hurt. I think I remember I was. Uh, yeah, I and I played with Robbie, and so he had come back and asked me about him. I said, "Dude, and, and, you know Robbie's yeah. just a little pit bull." And I'm like, "Dude, I wouldn't do that." You know, I know Matt. <laughs> Maddie's not much of a fighter at the time. Well, he still isn't today. Um, <clears throat> and I said, I wouldn't do that. Well, anyways, and I could have swore I told him he was a lefty. But apparently he forgot or so Robbie caught him with one of them. So, but I, I just, that chemistry that you guys had, and but it was almost like there was something in you. And I think that's like with a lot of pairs, a lot of players, guys that match up against top centermen, guys that match up against Wayne Gretzky. And, you know, they, they look forward to the challenge. I, I looked at you guys all the time as you you, you just relish the the challenge. You know, we did. We we yeah. knew the Forsberg. We and, knew who we were playing against. Yeah. We knew going in the Philly, it's Lindros, Detroit, Eisenman. But did you Forsberg. talk about it? No, we just knew. 
You knew you knew we what knew. the job was, right? We knew. We knew who we were playing against. Yeah. You know what? And then obviously Rick would come in and say, "You're playing against." And there's whoever. Rick Wilson again. Right. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we know. Like, but, you know. Anything in the video room? Did because well, you know Wilson Jarby were kind of we, Doug Jarvis. I mean, so did you go over those guys? So Wills, we we went sometimes more towards the end as video became bigger. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Killing us, but yeah. I I agree. Yeah. But uh. So yes, towards the end, yes, but not a ton, just a bit. Like they might have like eight shifts or eight like things they might want to do, but not a lot. Not definitely not a lot. Like. And I think that I think. But that, there were times, but not a lot. Yeah, I think that's a compliment to you guys because they, as a coach, you kind of go, they know what they're doing. I don't, and I think Wills is that kind of guy. I understand. Well, I don't want to give them too much too much info here. They did, they do it. They shut the guys down, and, and we can leave it. So now, we get closer to the cup. Right, and Bob Gainey starts doing his magic, and you know, I I went to and I said this I think to Carbo also. I mentioned Carbo a lot. I love that guy. But anyway, uh, you know, Bob, when I went to coach our minor league team, Bob had made a, a comment to me about would I go, and he goes, I have a plan A, but I need a plan B before I pull the trigger on plan A. He was always thinking a couple steps ahead, and and I remember when he called me and. Hey, would you like playing Minnesota? And then all of a sudden, Carbo comes and Keen comes and Scrudlin comes and you know guys like that. And then ultimately, the Brett Hull piece came into the puzzle. You sit around, and I didn't realize this until a few years ago, but I started looking at our team. And I went. I had actually started with Montreal, and somebody had talked to me about you know, man, you guys think you're. I started looking at the roster. I'm like, holy shit! Look at all the Hall of Famers that were on that team. No wonder. Oh yeah. And I looked at our Dallas team. And I'm like, wait a second. Newland, Hull, Carbonell, Belfort. Yeah. Like I never even realized that. And, you know, when everybody said you're working up to it, and I, I think we just kind of get so focused on what we do. But when you look back at that team, the '99 team, the pieces that we had. It would have been a crime if we wouldn't have won a cup with that group. Yeah, I, I just said that. I just said that like an hour ago. I just to who said the bartender? That. No, to, uh, doing the Eddie oh, Dodge doing the Ed Belfort thing. Oh, okay. that ninety nine. We knew we had to win. Basically, yeah. it was. But there was that process leading up to. But it, it was right? a huge process. Yeah. like you said, I'm getting knew it was uh, for Jerome McGinley, right? Like yeah. Bob had the balls to do it. I was going to say, and, and I think he took shit for that move probably at the time, but. Again. But it paid off, yeah. and, uh, and it, it was an absolute process all the way coming from Minnesota to here. It, yeah. it really was, and that's what I always say. I, I think in Dallas, and, and, you know, it's tough to say. I mean, you're in much like in Dallas. It, it just seemed like the process. It just seemed like the, the study process. Yeah. Yes, or at least we could see it coming. We in the could room. see it coming. We could see it coming. Yeah, in. yeah. So then the following year, I'm in Kalamazoo, and I get a anyway. We don't have to go into my call with Bob but that 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 year those are the ones that I think because I think about the one I I went to the finals uh three years after we won in in Montreal in 89 we lost to Calgary so I actually I look at it this way I beat Joe Neuendijk in the cup in 86 I lost to Joe Neuendijk in 89 and I won one together with them in 99 but that was the year you know I, I missed that one you guys go back the following year back to the finals game you play against New Jersey what happened in that one? Should you let, let me put it this way? Do you think that team was good enough to get to the, to the finals if it wasn't for Eddie Belfort? Eddie was unbelievable. He was incredible. He, if we if we would have won, he would have been the MVP. Yeah, far not. Yeah, uh, I I remember that. He yeah. was really. I don't necessarily remember all that leading up, like the first, second, third. I remember in the finals and in the conference finals, he was unbelievable. Yeah. Like but that, he, that's, uh, what if we had got there without him? The way he was playing, probably not. Yeah. Was and that uh, one? Because I can't remember. It was in Game Six, I think. You lost Game Six. Was that in Dallas, or was Game that Six is when we lost in Dallas? We won Game Five in Jersey. We were down three-one. Came back to Dallas and lost in Dallas. All right. So th that's why I find it. And again, I'm back to Montreal. Won it on the road. The year we lost to Calgary, lost it in Montreal. The only team ever to beat Montreal for a Stanley Cup, I was on that team in Montreal. And then in Dallas, we win it on the road in Buffalo. Yeah. So I've never, and then a couple championships in college, both of them on the road. On the I've road. never won at home. The parade, awesome, right? Awesome. Vinnie Paul, awesome. 
dime, all yeah, these guys. Awesome. Yeah, we had we had fun with these guys. Yeah. So now you end up in Detroit, your next stop. What's it like playing for that? I don't think you consider it a hometown team, but playing for the Wings. Well, you know what? First of all, I, I never wanted to leave Dallas. You know what? And I say this, I pretty much didn't have a choice. You right. know what? Uh, I, I really didn't. And, uh, but going to Detroit, you know, my family was excited. Uh, I still had mixed emotions. I mean, I was 12 years, right? Yeah. And I uh, had a lot of great years in Dallas. You have mixed emotions playing in Detroit or leaving here? This, leaving here and process. going to Detroit. So it was, that I was had, your pest yeah. off. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, it, but, you know, as going to Detroit probably would have been the next best, you know, yeah. was the next best thing for me. And, uh, you know, it was kind of unfortunate. I blew my ACL. I don't know if you know. I played 20 games, and uh, yeah. and I think that's with playoffs. 20 and games. Then and then was there years. a lockout right after that? Then we got locked out. For but then a full you play season. for the Motor City, what mechanics. were they called? Or the Vipers? Or no, what? the Mechanics. Mechanics. Yeah. Was Chelly on that team? Chelly, Smolensky, Avery. <laughs> so, so I felt I had to because the year before I blew my ACL out, I played, I just said, yeah. I think eight games and 12 playoff games. Next year, locked out. All of a sudden, we're halfway through the season. They cancel the season. I'm like, man, oh man, like, I played literally no hockey. Right. So I knew a guy who reached out to me, being from the area. And the team actually played like where I grew up, like eight minutes from where I grew up. I'm like, you know what? I don't know. Let me see. Let me. So I talked to Charlie. <laughs> Charlie's like, yeah, I'll play. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, Charlie will play anywhere. Well, that's yeah. And so. If he didn't play, I don't think I would. You know what? Right. I, I, I don't think I would have did it by myself. What was the hockey like? It was all right. <laughs> it was you all right. Know, you know, we had deals to cut in because they had a, a thing where they couldn't cut anyone and stuff like that. Did you, you get know, paid good money? We, we well, a li- not, not great money. No. You know, but we got paid. It was better than making nothing than sitting at yeah, home. We, we got paid, but not great money. But, uh, like, and that, you know, and, for me, I, I felt like I needed to do it. And so it was more of a conditioning it. thing for, for you me. to get back in shape yeah, and yeah. get ready to go. You know, and then Shelly came aboard, then Smolensky, who's from Detroit, wanted the, to play. Uh, yeah. And then Avery came, and that was probably the worst thing. Cause we Avery? Had, we Sean had Avery? A, yeah. We yeah. had it good. We had it good. And then Sean Avery came. Yes. And just, yeah. there are There are, you know how we used to call players sometimes that don't know what the fuck's going on in a drill? They're drill killers, right? Yeah. Well, this guy's a locker room killer. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. And we'll he would stir this. shit on the ice. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, we had it good. You know what? We were playing. We were having fun. It was good. And he came along and he was hitting guys. I think he got in a fight. And yeah. <laughs> what are you this doing? This is the same guy. What that, are you doing? This is the same yeah. guy that they the put a rule in uh, yeah. Brodeur in New Jersey jumping around in front yeah. of Bro- yeah. yeah. Okay. So how does Philly work out? How did that come about? Well, you know, because the lockout, I, uh, I got bought out from Detroit. Yeah. Me and McCarty, a few other guys, I forget who. Uh, and, uh, you know, once again, you know, you know, I don't know if I should say this or not, but Tom Hicks sent me a letter in the mail. Tom Hicks. About? I'm a free agent. Did he want you back here in Dallas? Yep. And, uh, Did that letter get sent to the general manager in Dallas or no? Uh, it, he knew about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it didn't work out. So did you send it? Did you reply back to Tom though? Well, he sent me a FedEx. And yeah. I, I showed my agent. Yeah. And my agent gave him a call. Told Doug. But did he call Tom back and say yes, he wants to play here? Uh, I don't know if he called Tom or not. He's fucking agent. I'm telling you're him. right. You're right. You're right. I don't know if he called Tom. I've never thought about that. I know he talked to Doug. Well, let's and, get him on the phone right like, now. The, Who was you your know? agent? <laughs> Pat Morris. Oh, he was. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, and Doug's like, what? Like, and I just knew nothing about it. Okay. Anyway, so Philly is the option. Okay. And uh, you know, I love Philly. You know what? I, I feel Dallas was a great organization when right. we were here. Right. Well, Philly's iconic, right? Yep. Detroit with Philly, great organization. Yep. Even though it's a short stint, it was great. And Philly, Ed Snyder. Like, it, you know what? I, I loved Philly. Ended up staying there. I played four years, retired, ended up staying there six more years. Who were a couple guys on that Philly team that, that came through Philly while you were there? You were there three years, right? Yeah. Okay. Four. Give, Forsberg. Give me, okay. Give me a couple other ones. 
that late. Uh, you love that team. You can't even name more than one guy. I said I loved the organization. <laughs> I loved the city. I did love the team. Oh, oh yeah. I, I know. I like like guys like Robert Ash and Mike Ratchy, but Forsberg, Mike Tanubal. When, but you, they put the C on you there also, right? Did you know? Well, Primo, yeah. yeah. So Keith Primo Keith, got hurt. Yeah. yeah. And they gave me the C. Okay. So did you finish then your career? I know no, you finished well, in so, Philly, but did you finish with the C on? So, no. So I, I was half year with the C in Philly. Truth be told, lads, Paul Homer wanted me. That's all we do is tell the truth on this okay. show. Paul Homer wanted me to be captain. Okay. He had talked to like most well, of the Homer, team. You're, you're a Homer style guy. I love Paul Homer. Yeah. You know what? God, that he he treats players good. He treated me unbelievable. Yeah. But anyways, uh, you know, he talked to most of the team. It was the younger team. Yeah. He said like 70% of the guys want you to be captain. And you know what? And I, I said, you know what, man? I said, Paul, I would rather not do it. I said, I did it. I said... Okay. Uh, and I said, whoever you choose, yeah. I will be behind them 100%. And, uh, you had to have a reason you didn't want to wear it. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I, it's because we're at the end of our end of the maybe line. Maybe that's it. I thought, you know or, what, my knee was really starting to act up, to be honest. Maybe, you know, and, and, if and you we just come off a horrible year in Philly, and yeah. maybe I just didn't want all that. Well, and I you would know, think I didn't that, want that pressure in Philly, maybe. You know, let, let's well, say, I, I was know, just kind of like, In Philly. Yeah, in Philly. And I, and I don't blame you because, like and I said earlier, you're the kind of guy that the way he does things, that's how you, you're the captain. And it's hard, if you can't do it, to be able to well, talk yeah, to the yeah, players, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and I remember telling Paul, I said, whoever you choose, I'll be behind them 100%. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. They, I, I'm there. And I said, at the end of the day, I will. But I just... It wasn't right. Right. And, you, you know, once you it. say that, you know you're not going to Yeah. Like, he's not going to do it, yeah. right? So, yeah. So, so I, I was like, you know, half a season, and then I wore the A. So, then you, reti- you retire from the NHL as a flyer. Yes. Technically, I guess you call it. Did you, were you part of the organization then as player yeah, Paul, development? Yeah, Paul gave me player like development right away. Okay. Like right, right away, he gave me a job. What, how did you feel about doing that job? Did you have to travel around and work with young players or? Yeah, yes. But, you know, and at the time, Philly was one of the few teams that had a couple player development guys. So I, I only looked at D-men. Right. At the time, most teams had one, so they were everywhere. Okay. So, yeah, I, our uh, uh, minor league team was in Glens Falls, which is like a three and a half hour drive. I drive up, drive up there, you know, once every, once every two and a half, three weeks, yeah. you know, stay the week. You know, do summer camps, you know, go watch defensemen play, play around. Uh, you know, I think I did that four years, you know, and, and I met with Paul again. And, you know, I didn't really love it. It kind of wasn't really my... Uh, wasn't your thing. Wasn't my thing. And we talked. Okay. So, okay. So that's not your thing as a, whatever, player development, whatever you want to call it. Now, all of a sudden, you end up... Did you guys buy... The star, uh, yeah. the sting. Well, yeah, and you know what? So, so you were to close finish for the story, four or five years. Because I was like, you know, Paul wanted me to be a coach, and I was like, Paul, I think I love coaching. Okay. And then, so that was kind of our agreement. I stayed on another year, but then Paul, they changed everything. <laughs> so everything was yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I go to Sarnia, coach five years. But did you buy it? Did you guys buy yeah, I mean, another that box team, yeah. But was Kevin, any of your brothers involved in that thing? No. Nope, okay. Nope, just so you buy the Sarnia Sting. Yeah. Do you still have anything to do with yeah, it? Yeah, we still. Yeah. So you still own it? Yeah. So you coached there for five years, I think it yeah. was, up until yeah. 2019. Yeah. What was that like? What? I loved it. You loved that? I loved it. You know what? We had good years, set records for wins and all that. Okay. <laughs> had to throw that in there. Always coaching. <laughs> just ask Hitchcock. It's always coaching. Had, that's probably where I got it from. Oh, of course. Well, so. I could, uh, but then COVID can I hit. Get my handler to get me another beer over here or something like that. You know. Um, so COVID hit. That was two. What was your last year? 2019 coaching. Yeah, it's okay. That would be right about the time, right? Yep. Okay. So COVID hit. We didn't play at all. Right. Which sucked for everybody, especially the Which players. Which sucked for everyone. Right. Yeah. And you know, and and then we were the only league not to play. Or at least not start up for any period of time. Is Toronto, Ontario still got to wear masks? Is that still going on now? <laughs> Three years later? Jesus. 
But, uh, and then the, the next year, we were kind of like, are we playing or not? And then I was like, well, I don't want to. So I just stepped up. Did you, so then did you hire the new coach? Are you? We hired the new coach, yeah. Okay. So, but you no aspirations any after this coaching? I, you, I really you like coaching. To get in? Would you? I'm in, I mean, I, I loved it, you know, yeah. but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Are you I, happy doing, what, what, so well, what are you so, doing now? So now, so now I'm actually, I, I'm into some different stuff now. I, uh, well, different stuff. Drugs yeah. or what do you mean yeah. different stuff? I mean, uh, no, no, I'm, uh, he doesn't want to tell me what he's doing. I, I'm working, uh, like part time. Are you down in Mexico? Are you on the for, border? For an, an, for an excavating company. Oh, okay. So they, they want to, uh, they're pretty big in Detroit. You know, uh, through people I have met them, talked to the owners. And they want to come up to kind of where I live in St. Clair County. They have no work there. Okay. And so I'm like getting them work in that county. So you're kind of like a PR guy. PR relationships. Oh, and that's the, a good gig to get, right? The pride, yeah. You know, it's good. So you're I, you know, I, I've been doing, yeah. Yeah, you're and I, and I know a ton of people up yeah. the way I'm at and uh, facilitating meetings, stuff like that. And, so you're good where you're at right now then? So yeah, did yeah. You, is that gone then, coaching? Yeah, probably. Probably? Yeah. Done? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd love to be a player development kind of thing with young defensemen, things like that. Just kind of stay in your lane yeah. kind of deal. All right. So, so hockey's pretty much here. In, uh, what was it, 2010, you go into the U.S. Hall of Fame? Yep. Right? Yep. And you go when you're with your brother. With my brother, and that's where I want to go. <laughs> All right, so I'll let you go there. Let me go there. So, how was that? Like going in with my brother was Does unbelievable. Does it kind of go full circle with that, your brother, or, you know, like. like yeah, and you know what? It, it, it was really, it was, it was really cool. It was. It was special. Yeah, it was really cool. Was, do you think, Kevin, do you think they waited for you? And said, Kevin, put right. this on the back burner. We want to put you both in the same Because of the timing of everything, yeah. Possibly, I don't know. You know, I'm not sure. But because Kevin had been retired, like, he retired at least, I think his last year was, like, 02 okay. in Carolina. Oh, by the way, did you guys buy a bar? Didn't you guys have a bar yeah, somewhere? Yeah, my, so my brother-in-law is in the bar. So we still own a few. But you still have them? Oh, you do? We oh, still bar, own a few. Oh, a few. Yeah. Oh, we should be doing the podcast in one of your bars. Not yeah, here. We travel. We got a big budget. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. We got a big budget. Yeah. We can, if we you're can in the Detroit that. area. So how many bars you guys got? We have two now. At one point, we had Do four. you work at them at all? No. No. No, that's my brother-in-law. That's what he does. We own the land, the building, okay. stuff like that. Can you drink for free at it? I can drink for free. Okay. I okay. can eat for free, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that same class, 2000, was it 2010 or 11 or something like that? I think like it was that? 10. Okay. Might have been 11. Ten or eleven. Let's just go. Yeah. I think there was another guy that went in at the same yeah. time as you, and ironically, it was Jeremy Roenick. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Jeremy okay. Roenick. <laughs> okay. So if we have to rewind for people that don't know, we well, let's go back. Let's go back to them years ago, after the that incident, which was well deserved. I've talked to Jr. Jr. has been here. He actually played yeah. in the thing that that we're gonna you're gonna be playing yeah. in tomorrow. I played in one six months ago. I saw. Him. Okay. Which so no incidents there. No, Good we're all done. Okay. So, how, how did... Let, let's go back to that hit. Does J, I think JR understands, because it was, it, was, uh, it was payback for a Madonna hit, right? Yeah. Was it premeditated on your side? Or did it just... Here it is. Well, was your slash premeditated? Yes, it was. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did Somebody a podcast that up with him I think he broke my about hand. three months ago, and yep. he said you broke his thumb. Yeah, his thumb. And that's why he didn't see me. Because I said, that's why he didn't see me. Because I asked him, I said, how didn't you see me? He was looking at his hand? He said he looked at his hand Did it all happen on the same really shift? Fast. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I didn't know that. Well, that's that, that's yeah. beautiful. That's even yeah. better. Anyways. So, was it premeditated going into that game? Or did it just you know, happen? It, it just happened. Yeah. You know, I knew going in if I had a shot to do whatever I was going to yeah. do it. But, and it was like the what, first two minutes of the oh, game. Oh, it was nasty. But it was like the first two minutes. Yeah, it was early. It was like really early. It, it wasn't premeditated, but you know, it was. I mean, we never really talked about memories. it as a team a lot, but it was right away. Short memories. Yep. A player was in the paper beefing off to yep. Chuck. Yep. 
Uh, and it's the timing was there. Oh, was it? It was beautiful timing. I mean, but uh, yeah, so I did a podcast with him like. Oh, did you? Three months ago. Okay. And because uh, I, I asked him, I said, how did you see me coming? You're coming behind the net. Yep. I'm assuming you knew I'm on the ice. Maybe you didn't, but you're a smart player. I'm assuming you knew. Yep. And he said, so, so that fucking Ludwig <laughs> slashed because me. He, and then he, then he actually laughed about it. He goes, I think it's the first time a player has ever got a broken thumb and a broken jaw in the same hit. <laughs> the same hit. <laughs> I'm glad I got to be part of all three of that. That's like a good threesome right there. The only one I've ever been in. So, and, and JR's a great guy. Yeah. And he's fucking a good yeah. guy. So you guys go to the Hall, U.S. Hall of yeah. Fame together. Yeah. How, how was that? Anything? You, you know what? Cool nothing. I, I had seen him prior. Yeah. Because uh, he was doing TV work and I was yeah. uh, doing the player development. So I'd be a lot, a lot of the Flyers fans watching and he'd be there. We would talk. You know, be on the elevator together sometimes. Yeah. You know, he was always great about it. He was always great. And I don't know if you remember this, Luds. My first or second year in Chicago, I hurt his knee, too. Oh, no. I don't know if you remember this. I yeah, don't. I think I hurt his ACL when he went that. I, I, I went to hit him, and he even says he jumped out of the way. Yeah. And he was good at that. And, he uh, would jump sideways he, like this. And that's and exactly guys. what he said. Yeah. But I, I remember seeing him a, a couple years after that, and he goes, you know what? I know you didn't mean that. He's always been good about it, you know? And, and uh, we've talked about it. And I, I was at a. Uh, a like I said, uh, a thing like this, a fundraiser thing like this, and yeah. uh, we took the picture together, and I sent it to my boys. Like, <laughs> well, I, I, I just it was it was like poetry in motion when I saw that you guys went into the Hall of Fame together there. So, anyway, let's get back. You, you brought about the fundraiser like this, and we can start getting to the end of this thing. Uh, so we've got some. Mike Commodore is going to be here. Darian Hatch is going to be here. We got a few other players. Like Como is going to come back and play in this thing tomorrow. Oh, and then tonight we have the great one the actually great is one. here. Yeah. I, you yeah. know, it, what a great job by Marty or however he yeah. he pulled this off. We've got Wayne Gretzky who's going to be here tonight, is which is our draft deal. Gretz is not going to play tomorrow, is what I heard. I think his daughter is actually going to SMU here, so I think that kind of twofold for Gretz to come back here. Any Gretzky moments for you? Since he's going to be here tonight, that you guys may ever chat about, or you know what? Not really. No. I still think he's the greatest player. Oh yeah. But uh, you know, you you obviously had more time against him. Yeah, I, I. I was more towards the end a bit. Yeah. You know, didn't play against him a lot. Where where was he when you came in? Where was he playing at? Was he just so, L.A., New York, he was or where in was L.A.? He? Okay. Which is the jersey apparently he's going to wear tonight. Oh, is it? I, I, I knew he's wearing a jersey. I didn't know. Yeah, we're, I, uh, tonight I think what we're doing is we're all getting in, a, in, in a Toyota trucks or something like yeah, that, yeah, I believe, yeah, and kind yeah. of two guys in a truck. And I was talking to our alumni director, Bob Bassett, and, and he was talking about us wearing jerseys. And, and I said, oh, what's Gretz wearing? Because I just automatically go back to Edmonton. I always just yeah, well, that's think what you think of him. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. he goes, no, he's wearing a L.A. jersey. And I'm like, oh, okay. Cool. So anyway. Um, yeah, I, you know what, I, I have a couple. I'll, I'll tell you one of them. I, I was, uh, I think it was my second year in Montreal, and the, the game was at the Forum. There were, somebody had kind of taken a half-assed run at Gretz. He had the puck. He got the puck inside his own zone, second period. And then it was Nyland, Chris Nyland, who took a, a second run at him. And you remember Kevin Collins, who was the yep. linesman? Yep. This is right in front of our bench. I'm sitting on the bench. Larry Robinson's right next to me. And Gretz, when, when the first guy went by him, he sidestepped him. Nyla went by him, he sidestepped him. Kevin Collins, the linesman, standing right in front of him. And he looked at Kevin Collins and he said, they got too many guys on the ice. And I'm like, <laughs> and I, I looked at Larry. And first was, I looked up and I'm like, wait a minute. And then I counted, we did have too many guys on the ice. I'm like, how the fuck how did you, you, can, how, you know sidestep I mean? two guys? This guy tried to take you out that. And so it's always the vision with The vision. Him. Yeah. The vision. His it's, vision was. And that that's what I think. By the far and away. Biggest thing. The best. For Wayne Gretzky. Yes. Is, is the His vision, vision was. It, it's very cool uh, to have Gretzky be part of this thing for us tonight. It's very cool that you came and did this thing with me. It's good to have you back here again. Uh, I hope you get back here a little bit more often. We can do some of these things. Uh, we can. Get, I'd love to get your old partner on here, but he keeps blowing me off every three days. Well, he's coming down next month. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, then I can have them in the studio. We got a beautiful little He's studio. Coming out here. Next month. Okay, good. Um, the end of the month. Anyway, Hatch, I, I appreciate you. I, I respect you a ton for your game, what you did for us. 
as a, as a team, the way you carried yourself as a captain. Um, Big Daddy was always right there, especially behind your partner. And I thank you for doing this thing tonight. Oh, we will have a good time this weekend. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if we can get a couple pictures in game three tomorrow of you. I just want to get some still shots, okay. see how you're doing in game three. And we can put them on the, on the link here. Anyway, <laughs> Hatch, I appreciate it. Yep. Cheers, buddy. Suds with Luds, man. Suds with Luds. I like it. Well, that's another episode. Again, just want to thank Herman Marshall for coming on board, being a sponsor with us. And that is the end of this podcast. Cheers.